private notice question on the UK's contribution to eliminating HIV AIDS. Lord Fowler. <coughs> My Lords, um, I beg leave to ask the question which, of which I have given private notice, uh, namely to ask His Majesty's Government, in the light of World AIDS Day today and the estimated 650,000 annual deaths worldwide from HIV AIDS, what plans they have to increase their contribution to eliminating the disease. My Lords, is not the tragedy that although we, we now have all the means to eliminate AIDS, unlike the time when I was a minister, yet the annual figures still show worldwide this figure of 650,000 deaths, including, very significantly, over 200,000 deaths of women, and worst of all, 100,000 deaths of children. In the light of this continuing emergency, how can it be justified that the government has cut back the resources they are devo devoted to fighting this disease, and will they now reconsider uh, that policy? Yeah. My Lords, the UK is committed to working in partnership to deliver on the global AIDS strategy and ending the epidemic of AIDS by the end of this decade. This is evidenced by our recent pledge of £1 billion to the Global Fund, and this funding will help to provide antiretroviral <coughs> therapy for 1.8 million people. The UK also provides substantial funding to the World Health Organization and UNAIDS, UNAIDS and supports countries to strengthen their health systems. Together, we're working towards ensuring that all can access the prevention and treatment services needed to make progress on HIV and AIDS. Uh, I echo the words of the noble Lord, Lord, Lord Fowler. Uh, 38.4 million people globally are living with HIV in 2021. And as we have seen with other pandemics, an infection in one country ultimately affects us all. So therefore, it's in our national interest that we increase funding uh, to the Global Fund fighting AIDS, uh, HIV and malaria. But, my Lords, globally and nationally, we have seen incredible advances in tackling HIV. Central to these benefits is empowering individuals to test, take control and therefore live a healthy life with HIV-positive status. So I ask the Noble Lord, the Minister, will the Government commit to widening the prescribing of PrEP beyond sexual health clinics to pharmacies, general practitioners, community and maternity services? PrEP is part of the armoury that prevents transmission. My Lords, we have the tools, but they are useless if they are not widely accessible. My, my Lords, the UK met the UNAIDS 95-95-95 targets for the first time uh, two years ago in 2020. 95% uh, of HIV-positive individuals were diagnosed, 99% uh, of those people who were diagnosed were receiving treatment, and 97% of those receiving treatment were being virally suppressed. Uh, I very much note the, 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 the suggestion by the Noble Lord uh, about uh, increasing availability of PrEP, and that is a message which I'll convey to the Health Service. My Lords, My Lords th uh, there are concerns that a fall in HIV testing levels during the pandemic may hamper the Government's efforts to eliminate HIV transmission in England by 2030. But does the Minister share those concerns, and will the Government be taking extra measures to increase the testing levels again? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my Lords, I don't have uh, specific uh, figures in relation to the, uh, the, the rate of testing during the pandemic, I'm afraid. If they exist, I'll certainly make sure they're made available. But, but I can absolutely say that the UK uh, remains completely committed to the global goal of achieving a zero new HIV transmissions by 2030. And as a nation, we've made big progress, which I, as, I, as I relayed in my previous answer, domestically but internationally, we remain one of the main fi uh, funders and supporters of action to tackle HIV AIDS. Will the Noble Lord, my Lord, will the Noble Lord uh, take up the powerful point made by Lord Cashman that in the domestic UK context, women are losing out 
on getting treatments, including PrEP. There's very low take-up. And will he speak to his colleagues in the Department of Health about that? But it's certainly the case globally that, that women with HIV have some of the highest uh, maternal death rates, which is why our uh, ending preventable deaths approach, which is a major focus of, of UK ODA, um, has a strong rights and equality focus and, and, and will remain a, a priority for the UK. And the domestic, in the UK context, I'll certainly uh, convey that uh, suggestion to the Department for Health. I welcome the government's recent commitment of a billion pounds to the Global Fund, which in the circumstances uh, fiscally here in the UK is a remarkable and generous donation and makes us one of the best contributors still uh, in the world to this important fund. Of these 650,000 deaths from AIDS every year globally, to which my noble friend uh, uh, Lord Fowler referred, uh, some third are from uh, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is the biggest single cause of death of people who have HIV. And co-infection, the two diseases, uh, remains a serious problem. Uh, does my noble friend recognise the importance of tackling both major epidemics, tuberculosis and HIV, together, and that that commitment uh, will continue to be important if we are to have some chance of beating these diseases there is no chance of beating them, uh, TB, by uh, 2030, uh, but at least uh, within the lifetime of a generation. I first thank my, my noble, the Noble Lord um, for his, his comments about our contribution to the Global Fund, and I agree with him. I mean, in, in the face of the pressures that, that we're facing, the budgetary pressures, I was very um, uh, relieved uh, and pleased that we were able to make that commitment uh, to the Global Fund, which is doing extraordinarily uh, important work. The Noble Lord also makes an important point about TB. And, and it is the case that, that, that until uh, just a few years ago, the trajectory for TB was very much downwards. And it was one of those uh, historic uh, illnesses which, which we had almost got to grips with and certainly believed we were getting to grips with. And one of the problems uh, is that we are seeing the weakening of the effectiveness of antibiotics. And there is a, currently a limited supply of antibiotics. And if we continue to abuse them, as we are globally, well over half of the world's antibiotics are used just to keep animals alive in factory farm conditions, conditions in which they would not otherwise survive. And it just seems to me to be the height of irresponsibility to be wasting this globally, this treasure, antibiotics, this miracle cure, uh, which our ancestors would have dreamt of in order just to get animals a bit fatter, a bit quicker, and keep them alive in conditions that we shouldn't be keeping them in any case. So this is a priority. The UK is leading this issue um, and is doing extraordinarily important work on it. And I don't think we can solve the problem that the Noble Lord raised unless we get to grips with our abuse of antibiotics. Uh, I think the Noble Lord, the Minister, is allowing his uh, uh, other passions to slip <laughs> into the answer here. And well done on doing that. And can I also uh, commend Noble Lord, Lord Fowler, for his yeah, absolute yeah, yeah, consistency yeah. and championing of this issue. My Lords, the role of UNAIDS is crucial for making progress in the global fight against HIV and AIDS, but they are now facing a severe shortfall in their operating budget. So what steps will the government take to support UNAIDS in building its capacity? And second, on the domestic front, my Lords, it seems that the law really needs to keep up with the science, which I think has been referred to already. And in recognition of this today, the Labour Party is supporting people with HIV that they should have equal access to fertility treatments. Does the Noble Lord agree that this is important and how can he help to take it forward? Yeah. Um, I, I echo uh, the Neville Baroness's remarks in relation to Noble Lord Fowler, um, who has long and distinguished record of championing this issue um, and, and is widely respected for having done so. Um, the, the Neville Baroness asked about U, uh, UN AIDS, and, and, and of course the, the UK is completely committed to UN AIDS. We will continue to work to ensure that UN AIDS uh, uh, leads the implementation of the ambitious new global aid strategy for 2021 to 2026 at the UN high-level meeting on HIV in June last year. Uh, the UK 
was at the forefront of working to secure the highest level of commitment from our global partners so that the world has the best chance of meeting those 2030 goals to end AIDS. And on the domestic question, I'm afraid I'm not qualified to answer that question, but I instinctively agree with the premise of the question put to me by the noble Baroness, and I'll make sure that the Department for Health has a look at it. My Lords, my Lords, um, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, adolescent girls and young women are three times more likely to acquire HIV than adolescent boys and men. Can the noble Lord, the Minister, say what's being done to fund programmes which help keep girls in education, which we know reduces their vulnerability to HIV by up to 50%? No, no, noble Baroness is right, as the right Reverend Prelate is right. Uh, we, we, we continue to support stronger health systems around the world uh, more broadly because that in turn helps end uh, AIDS-related deaths and prevent new HIV infections. I said earlier that women with HIV have the highest uh, maternal death rates, which is why our ending the, the preventable deaths approach remains a priority for the UK. Uh, on education, I mean, education has been now for some years, particularly education of, of women and girls, a, a top priority as enshrined in the integrated view, but also the international development strategy. And, and it remains a priority, and it will remain a priority. My Lords, what are the key challenges for the UK to eliminate, meet the target of eliminating HIV by 20, transmission of HIV by 2030? Is the elimination of undiagnosed, undiagnosed cases, which currently out of the 107,000 total cases, probably are around 5,000. How does the government intend to tackle that? Well, my Lords, much of our work uh, uh, that, that, that we support is through the multilateral system. We were talking earlier about the, the Global Fund, um, and I I increasing diagnosis rates remains a, a key priority for not just the Global Fund, but other multilateral uh, organs as well. So through our support for those institutions, we are in turn supporting uh, 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 increased and escalated efforts to boost diagnosis rates. My Lord, my Lord, would the government give some new publicity on the importance of prevention of HIV and AIDS? Some people think it has gone away. My Lords, we have heard clear and loud today it has not gone away. Uh, I, th I think look, it's certainly right that here in the UK we have seen remarkable progress um, and, and I think people in the UK uh, can take comfort from the figures that I cited right at the beginning of, of this exchange. But, but that is not true internationally, as we heard from the noble Lord Fowler, where the numbers are really shocking, 650,000 annual deaths. So prevention has to be, as it is with all preventable diseases, has to be a key priority. And, and I hope my answer, just two questions ago in relation to prevention of early deaths, particularly among uh, women and girls, will have provided some reassurance to the noble Baroness. I want to refer to your response to Lord Cashman's question about the availability of PrEP beyond sexual health clinics. It's really important, my Lords, that, that, that it is more universally available. But I want to ask a second question. Are we helping other countries to have access to PrEP, particularly some of the women uh, and children um, in Africa that uh, the, the noble, uh, sorry, the, the Rev, right Reverend Prelate referred to earlier on? The, 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 um, the, the wider availability of PrEP is, is an issue that, that I know the government is working on. I don't belong to the relevant department, so I can't provide authoritative figures. But, but the case is, 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 is bulletproof, and, and, I'm, and, I, and, I, and I, I know that is a view that's shared by, by colleagues across government. Um, but I'm going to have to provide, uh, via them, a more updated response to that, I'm afraid. And in terms of the international rollout and availability of PrEP, I believe that is something that the Global Fund is also doing. The Global Fund is the main vehicle that we use, and it's therefore the main vehicle we support, which is why our commitment of a billion pounds is so welcome. Um, but all of that work is through those multilateral institu institutions. My Will the uh, Minister um, perhaps remind the current Chancellor of the Exchequer that as a newly elected MP and member of the International Development Committee, he led a campaign to ensure that the UK set annual targets, monitored them, and delivered retrovirals across the developing world. Will he remind the Chancellor of the Exchequer of his commitment and suggest he repeats it now? <laughs> <laughs> My, my, my honourable friend, the Chancellor, has, um, has, has long championed, uh, been a champion of UK aid, um, and, and I very much hope 
that as a consequence, in his current capacity, he will be able to do more than that. I hope he'll be able to return us as quickly as possible, as soon as the, the fiscal situation allows, to the 0.7. The 0.5, it still makes us one of the most generous countries in the world, but it also inhibits some of the areas where we showed real leadership in the years up to uh, that decrease. So I have every confidence that the Chancellor uh, will wish to do everything he can in his current post to bolster our position of global leadership through our deployment of aid. And part of that, of course, is having rigorous targets and ensuring that we have value for money. My Lords, isn't one of the major issues around HIV is the stigma attached to people who are HIV positive. It's not widely understood that with effective treatment, viral load can be undetectable, and those people cannot transmit the virus to other people. What is the government doing, both in the UK and globally, to reduce the stigma associated with HIV? Yeah. The, 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 the noble Lord makes an important point, and he too has, 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 has been a, a vocal champion, um, both in the domestic context and beyond. But the UK itself, as a country, uh, is a champion of human rights around the world, and we're committed to the principle of non-discrimination on any grounds, including on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity, the issues which are often conflated uh, with the issue that we're discussing today. Um, and, and the noble lord is absolutely right to point to the stigma associated with HIV AIDS, but he also, you know, his, 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 his point will have been recorded for posterity that, that around the, the facts of the issue, the facts of the eff efficacy of current treatments and, the, and the, 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 the removal of danger that that results in.